In the small town of Rockwell, there lived a woman, Mary. She had a daughter, Tracy, and a son, Owen. Her son worked as a manager in a very big bank, and Mary was very proud about it. She took very good care of her son. Owen was very obedient and would always listen to his mother. Mary's daughter, Tracy, wanted to go study further and to work like her brother. But Mary believed that women shouldn't be working in office. So, as soon as Tracy finished her studies, Mary found a nice groom and got her daughter married in grand event. Then, she started looking for a bride for her son. One day, Mary's brother Sam and his wife Lisa came to their house. Welcome brother. What is the reason behind this surprise visit? I was in the neighborhood regarding my daughter's marriage. So I thought I should see how you are doing. So nice of you, brother. Otherwise, you don't have time for anything else than your work. So what do you say? It's a nice family. So I am thinking that I should get the elder daughter married as soon as possible. Then there are three more kids whose marriages I have to arrange for. You have taken a right decision, brother. You should get Alice married very soon. She is completing her studies this year, right? Yes, that's why I started searching for the groom. Mary, if you don't mind, shall I ask you something? Come on, Lisa. Why would I mind? You can say anything. Don't hesitate. You know our Alice very well. You know that she is quiet, well-mannered. She always stops in her class. And she also knows how to do all the house chores. She respects elders too. Of course, Lisa. I know that Alice is very nice girl. I have seen her since childhood. She is my favorite niece. But please be clear about what are you trying to say. Um, Mary, I was thinking that instead of searching a groom from unknown family, it will be better if you accept Alice as your daughter-in-law. I heard you are also searching for a bride for Sam. If it happens, there will be no problem at all. Mary thought to herself, Alice is really nice girl. She is well cultured and beautiful too. But Lisa had all four girls. What if Alice marries my son and gives birth to only daughters? No way. My daughter-in-law should give birth to a son who will continue this family line. I can't accept this proposal after knowing all this. I should refuse now so I won't regret it further. Uh, this is very nice idea, Lisa. But the problem is, my husband don't like marriages uh, arranged between the relatives. But you don't worry. I will help you find a nice boy for Alice. Lisa knew very well that Mary is rejecting this proposal because she is scared that Alice will have only daughter just like her. Lisa and Sam talked for a while and then left for their home. After some days, they got Alice married to another boy. After a few months, Mary also found a nice girl, Diana. Owen and Diana got married. Diana was very beautiful and by profession, she was an engineer. She had modern beliefs. She would do all her duties and always obeyed her in-laws. One day, she got a call from a company. Diana, who were you talking to? Your mom has called earlier. Then with whom were you talking for so long? Mother, I had applied for a job in a very big company. Now they are giving me a chance. They have called me for an interview tomorrow. Diana, it's good that you are educated. But I won't like if my daughter-in-law work in a company. My son is earning very well. There is no need for you to find a job. But, but mother... I don't want to discuss it further. Go do your chores. I will talk to Owen in the evening when he will return home. Don't try to change my mind. Diana quietly went into the kitchen and started doing her work. In the evening when Owen returned, Mary told him that Diana has applied for a job. She told him that she won't allow Diana to work and this is her final decision. Saying this, she left the room. Owen didn't believe in such things but he always obeyed his mother. So he tried to convince his wife. Diana was sitting sadly in her room. He went to her. What happened, Diana? Why do you look so sad? You are asking as if you don't know anything. Now you tell me, am I not allowed to do job? It's not about just earning money. It is a chance to prove that I am capable of doing this job. That is why I want to work. Do you understand? Diana, please calm down and listen to me. Look, I have no problem with your job, but my mother is orthodox. 
we can't change her way of thinking overnight it's been just 2 months since we got married and mother is also not feeling well these days so let some days go i will convince her after few days okay diana agreed to this and she left the room smiling few months had passed and now diana was pregnant mary started behaving nicely with diana she took very good care of her daughter in law this made diana very happy after few months diana gave birth to a beautiful daughter but her mother in law did not like it she told diana that next time she wants a son what are you saying mother what does it matter if it's a girl or a boy it's not diana's fault you keep quiet and don't come between us you don't understand anything go do your work this made diana very sad she cried and went to her room mary started fighting with diana every time she would taunt diana for giving birth to a daughter and diana had to do all the chores by herself one day mary's sister in law lisa came to her house and gave her sweets mary have some sweets i have a very good news today so i came here to celebrate it with you mary ate a sweet and asked okay lisa but will you tell me what is the good news alice gave birth to a son today a son i was in the neighborhood so i thought i would share this good news with you now i have to leave i am in a hurry lisa left the house mary was not happy with the news in fact she was very angry hmm lisa didn't come here to give me sweets she came here to taunt me i rejected her daughter and now my daughter in law has a daughter while her daughter has a son she wanted to rub it in my face she wanted to prove me inferior and wrong and all this happened because of this diana now her behavior got worse she insulted her and made her do all the chores diana couldn't tolerate and left their home along with her daughter to stay with her parents owen managed to convince her to come back 2 3 years passed like this now diana was pregnant again diana if you give birth to daughter this time then don't show me your face and don't come back here i will get my son married to someone else mother i have tolerated all this for so many years but not anymore i don't care if this baby is a boy or a girl both are equal to me from now on if you try to torture me due to this i will file a police complaint against you keep this in mind after hearing this reply mary started torturing her even more even though she was pregnant mary didn't pay attention to her granddaughter also she started behaving rudely with her too few days passed like this on the day of delivery owen took diana to the hospital but mary didn't go with them diana gave birth to a cute boy owen told this good news to his mother what is this true i have grandson yes mother it's a son uh, son uh, take me to the hospital right now i want to see my grandson i want to hold him mary went to the hospital with owen she held her grandson in her arms oh my sweet child my grandson your grandmother was waiting for you so long after all this long wait here you are finally now i will show lisa that i also have grandson she was taunting me now i will not allow her to cross my door mary was very happy now even she changed her attitude towards her daughter in law after few days mary's daughter tracy was also pregnant and she came to stay with her mother she took good care of tracy diana also took care of tracy one day tracy said to diana diana you are the best sister in law in the world you take care of me so much and please forgive me if you can i knew that mother was torturing you and even knowing this i couldn't come forward to help you but you still took care of everyone we can't change my mother's nature don't worry tracy i'm just doing my duty as a woman i can't leave other women to herself in this situation we have to understand this first of all we should do our duty as a woman i know what you need in this situation and hence i am giving it all to you as there was no one for me who took care of me what happened in my case i won't let that happen to you now it was time for tracy's delivery and she gave birth to a beautiful daughter 
but her mother-in-law didn't like that and she started insulting Tracy in front of Mary. Look Tracy, I wanted a grandson this time. Next time I want grandson at any cost. We all know how much your mother tortured your sister-in-law. I am just telling you what I want. Keep that in mind. Saying this, her mother-in-law left. Mary was listening to all this conversation. Now she was regretting about her behavior. Now she understood that she was a woman, yet she failed to understood what her daughter-in-law is going through. And when this happened to her own daughter, she realized her mistake. She couldn't look into Diana's eyes due to shame. Now her thinking changed. She apologized to her daughter-in-law and since that day she started treating boy and girl equally. She even gave permission to Diana to search a job. She started taking responsibilities at home and all of them lived a happy life. This story teaches us that we should treat boys and girls equally. Now, oh, idiot, does it take so long to fetch water? You have to wash the clothes, clean the utensils. Who is going to do all that? I will do it right away, mother. Don't you dare to call me mother. You have killed your own mother during your birth. Do you want to kill me too? Oh, Emma dear, you got up early. Are you feeling well? Yes, mother. I am fine. I am just feeling hungry. Give me something to eat. Oh my god. See my darling is hungry. And this witch has not cooked food yet. Now, are you going to stare at me like this or will you cook food? I will cook food right away, mother. Right away. Ma, today I want to eat fish. Yes, dear. Today we will cook fish. Oh, Emma, did you hear that? My daughter wants to have fish today. Go and catch some fish from the river. Yes, I'm going. Today I can't find even one fish. What shall I do? Mother, I miss you a lot today. Why did you leave me? Am I so bad? Please say something, mother. Oh, my ring. This is my mother's only thing left. Give me back my ring. What kind of tunnel is this? What place is this? Help! Help! My children! There's fire! Fire! Somebody save my children! They will die! Help! My children! My little children! They're trapped in fire! Somebody save them! Daughter, can you save them? Please help me! Don't worry, bird. I will save them right now. to you dear you proceed on this road hey what is this how is the water of this river drying up oh so you are here that ring is my mother's last thing i have give me back right now you catch and kill us every day you are very bad i will not give you the ring back I am helpless. I have to do that because my stepmother asks me to do. Okay. I will give you your ring back. But you will have to do something for that. There lives a witch on the hill. She is drying up the water of the river with her black magic. If this continues, this river will dry up soon and we will be killed. You will have to stop the witch somehow and end her black magic. Okay. I will do your work. But you will have to promise me one thing. If I stop that witch, you will give my ring back. 
Yes, sure, I promise you. Once the water in this river dries up, I will eat all the fish out here. Then I will not have to catch fish. Ha ha ha. You should go from here. This witch is wicked. She has trapped me in this cage. She will catch you too. Go away. Huh? Run away. I have opened the cage. No, I am afraid to go out. The witch will catch me again. I will stay here. Then I will have to save you from the witch. Who are you? What are you doing here? You should stop your black magic. This is drying up the river. And fishes are dying. Don't do this. <laughs> I will eat all the fish out there. I am tired catching the fish. And that is why I am drying up the river. You should not do this. Don't do this. Who are you to stop me? Now I will make you a fish and eat you. <laughs> okay, now I will bring some spices from the market. Then I will cook you and eat you. <laughs> Listen, Parrot, I need your help. If you don't show courage today, then we will not be able to get rid of this witch forever. You are very brave and good girl. I will help you. Take this. Keep this magic stick with you. You can teach a lesson to the witch by this. Who brought you back to this original form? That he will tell you. You catch people and imprison them. Now we will make you pay. Why are you doing this? I only wanted to eat fish. You were getting fish to eat as per your need. But you are greedy and want to eat all of them. There is a big difference between greed and need. You are harming object for your greed and benefit. Forgive me. I was blinded by greed. You are right. I should take things as per my need. Forgive me. I will stop my black magic and will not kill any fish from today. You opened my eyes, daughter. Thank you so much, Emma. You are really very good and sweet, child. You save us all, even the nest of the bird and the parrot also. But how do you know all this? I know everything. I was just testing you. Now I want to give you something, after which you will not have to catch fish again. So much cold. Yes, because you deserve this. Because your heart is valuable than this gold. And yes, take your mother's ring. Thank you. I will be grateful forever. Thank you so much. Oh, what is this? So much gold. Where did you get this?
Wow! Then we two will also go and bring lots of gold. You must cook food by then. Wow! This is really very nice. Now I will take lots of gold from here. Please help me. Save my children. Save my nest. Why will we risk our life to save your nest? And then if something happens to us? Come mother, let's go fast. We have come here to get gold. This seems to be the same fish. Come. Let's ask for gold. Hey fish, were you the one who gave gold to my Emma? Are you her mother? Yes, I am her mother. Now give us that gold too. I will give it to you now. Oh, how did this happen? How did we become frog? This is because both of you are lazy, slothful and greedy. You are Emma's stepmother. Both of you have treated her very badly and this is your punishment for that. No, no, please forgive us. We will never treat her badly now. And we don't even need gold. Please make us as before. We will fix some mistakes. Now go and live happily together. This is for your benefit. Please forgive us, dear. We have hurt you. We are ashamed of our deeds. Forgive us. My mother. Long, long ago, King Harry ruled the city of Azel. He had two children. Prince Sean and Princess Mia. People were very happy in his kingdom. A lady named Shell lived in his kingdom. Shell had two daughters. One was Emma and the other one was Olivia. They also went out to work. But their mother didn't like them to go to work outside. They were very unhappy to see their mother work so hard. We should also help our mother. You are right sister. But how can we help our dear mother? Look Olivia, last year when I was working with the magician, she granted me a wish that I could transform myself into a big tree. Let's try that out. I will need a pot of water and a bowl of rose petals. Go, get things. Olivia brings all the required things. Now Olivia, shower these rose petals over me and I will be transformed into a very big flowering tree. You must pluck the flowers very carefully. Remember, you must not do to damage to any leaf or twig. Okay sister. Emma sits on the ground and chants a mantra. And then Olivia showers the rose petals on her. And with the twinkling of the eye, Emma gets transformed into a big flowering tree. Seeing this, Olivia is very happy. She carefully plucks two baskets of flowers. Then she pours a pot full of water on her. And then Emma turns back into her original form. Sister, who will go to sell these flowers? Let me go to sell the flowers in the city. Emma tries to sell the flowers outside the palace gate. Please buy some flowers. I have fresh and beautiful flowers. At that time, Mia hears Emma's voice and she goes to her mother. Mother, those flowers are so beautiful. A girl is selling them outside. Can I call her in the palace? Okay, dear. Mia summons some servants to call Emma inside the palace. Greetings, Your Highness. Did you call me in? Yes, I called you. Yes, Your Highness. What can I do for you, please? Princess Mia likes these flowers very much. How much are these for? What can I say? We are very poor, Your Highness. I will be satisfied whatever you give me. Okay. The Queen takes the basket of flowers and gives a bundle of gold coins to Emma in return. Emma returns to her home and she is very happy to get the gold coins. Olivia is also very happy to see the coins. They used to gather flowers every day and sell those flowers in the market. The princess too used to buy the flowers regularly. Who brings these flowers every day? I have never seen such flowers. I want to see the tree bearing such flowers. 
Prince, there's a girl who brings these flowers every day. I'm not sure where she gets them, but yes, I know where she lives. Hmm, I must see the tree which bears such beautiful flowers. The prince takes his favorite horse and reaches Emma's house. Emma and Olivia are in their garden and as usual, they're doing their job of plucking flowers. And then Emma returns to her original form. The princess beholds the whole sight. He falls in love at the sight of Emma's beauty. On returning to the palace, he says to his father, Father, I have seen a girl today and I like her very much. Oh, you fell for a girl. She is worth it. I shall talk to her family tomorrow. Very kind of you, father. The king called his guards and ordered them to call Emma's mother. The guards go to Shell's house and summons her to the palace. Ema, Olivia, come here. I have been summoned by the palace. Who is the flower girl? Can anybody tell what is happening? Olivia and Emma tell the story of selling flowers to their mother. Their mother feels very sad and is worried as to what might happen the next day. The next day, Shell goes to the palace. The king and queen were sitting by the table and were waiting for somebody. Shell entered the palace. Your Highness, what can I do for you please? Have I done anything wrong? No, no. Please have a seat. We called you today for a very special cause. Yes, Your Highness. We want to marry off our Prince Sean to your daughter Emma. Do you approve of the proposal? Your Highness, we are very poor. We are no match for you. We just want your daughter. I will take care of the rest. I am greatly honored, Your Highness. It's an honor to get my daughter married here. So shall I take this as a yes? Gladly, Your Highness. On an auspicious day, Sean and Emma get married. Emma, I want you to shower the palace with a beautiful, fragrant flower. What are you saying? Oh, I know everything. You can transform yourself into a tree also. The prince and Emma then go to the garden. The princess showers a bowl of rose petals on her. Emma turns into a beautiful flowering tree. The prince is very pleased to see this. The whole palace is filled with the sweet fragrance of the flowers. Princess Mia used to watch this from the window every day. Heart of heart, she felt very jealous. One fine day, she took the permission of the king and the queen to take Emma out to play with her. Mia, you are taking her with you. She is your responsibility. Do you get it? Yes, father. Mia takes Emma along with her to play with her friends. Mia wants to show her friends how Emma could transform herself into a tree. She tells Emma, Emma, come on, show my friends how you can turn yourself into a flowering tree. What nonsense are you talking about, Mia? Am I a magician or what? I know everything. Do it right now. I shouldn't have come out with you. It's a grave mistake. Emma then explains all the rules to Mia and her friends. She warns them not to pluck leaves and break the branches. All the friends bring the required things and making Emma sit on the ground, they pour the rose petals on her in a very clumsy manner. Emma turns into a flowering tree. All the friends are thrilled and they start plucking the flowers. Suddenly it starts raining heavily and the friends break the branches on the tree. One of the friends hurriedly pours a pot of water over the tree. Mia and all her friends run away from there. Emma is left all alone, bruised and crippled. Finally, she takes the help of a traveller. The traveller is kind enough to drop Emma at her house. Her mother is very upset to see her in this condition. She starts her treatment and there in the palace... Mia, where is Emma? She didn't come back. Where have you left her? She will come back by herself. The queen is trying to ask Princess Mia about Emma. But she's not telling anything. Prince Sean is trying hard to find Emma everywhere. But she is found nowhere. One day the prince is crossing Emma's house. And there he suddenly finds her. He reaches out to her. Princess, you are here. And I've been searching for you everywhere. But I couldn't find you. Why are you here? I'm not going to send my daughter with you. Shell then tells the whole story to the prince. Mia will have to pay for her actions. I will see that she is appropriately punished. I will return to the palace only if you promise me to forgive Mia. As you wish, princess. The prince agrees to it and takes her back to the palace. Mia begs for forgiveness. Emma had already forgiven her. 
The king calls for the coronation of Prince Sean and Princess Emma. They become the king and queen of the kingdom. King Sean takes good care of his queen. They both live a very happy life thereafter. The model of the story is that we should always be ready to help one another. But if anyone tries to play with our modesty, then he should also be taught a good lesson because enduring injustice is as bad as the crime itself.